guys, welcome to number 10 of our weekly recap series. Today is December 28th, 2012. Obviously enough, this is going to be the last recap of the calendar year, but we'll look forward to seeing you guys in 2013. And to be honest with you, I'm looking forward to getting a little break because it's actually been an insane year for VoIP and I'm looking forward to much more in the future. So, like I said, the year's going to be coming to a close and this is the a, a sort, of, sort of abbreviated version of the show because we just came back from vacation on Wednesday. I hope everyone had a great holiday. I know I got everything I wanted and now it's time to give you guys what you want and that's the news. So the first piece of news is from 8x8 and they're going to present at the 2013 City Conference. It looks like 8x8 are going to continue right where they left off in 2012, continuing on the right foot in 2013. The City 2013 conference features global internet, media, and telecoms monsters in the industry. Chairman and CEO Brian Martin will be presenting along with CFO Dan Weinrich. So you can check out the webcast of this presentation through 8x8's site. We've included the link in the article. You can go ahead and click that link and check out where it's going to be. And you can also subscribe for alerts for 8x8. So the three-day conference is going to be going on in the luxurious Bellagio in Las Vegas. It's going to feature presentations from top companies, like I said. Not quite sure what the presentations are going to pertain to, but rest assured we'll be following that and bringing it to you. Second piece of news, Ring Central have a new and improved web interface. Consider it a nesting instinct for parents to be. Ring Central are creating a happy home that's comfortable and functional and works very well around their new business SMSs, which is going to be also be coming out early next year. They didn't quite say when it's going to be released, there's no specifics, but uh, look for it as the same as Vocalocity, who recently revamped their administrative portal along with their homepage. You're going to see these uh, improvements sort of roll out over the next few weeks. So Ring Central really surged ahead of the pack this year. A new interface is a wonderful idea. It's going to have more shortcuts, settings, customization options, quick links, and a whole lot more. You guys can check out the details on our website, of course. One new addition I really love is their How Do I section. All you do is click and you get a video which is really under a minute with, uh, uh, how do I say, a kinesthetic learning tactic where uh, it's vicarious kinesthetics, ra rather, where somebody is going through the steps and you can get a nice visual guide as to how to do things on the interface. There's step-by-step -step walkthroughs. I think it's a really great touch and ReCentral just gets better and better uh, as time rolls on. So keep an eye on your account for the new additions which are going to be uh, rolling out in the next maybe two weeks or so, like I said. Next piece of news, Microsoft Link is upon us and it looks fantastic. Uh, here's just a few of the things, I'm not going to go through the laundry list format with you guys, but uh, I'll just read off a few of the things that I felt were of note. Uh, one of them is persistent chat rooms. You can hold ongoing conversations with friends and colleagues, keep a static room for, you know, sales, chat, uh, whatever you want. It's, it's specifically catered to your life, to your business, whatever that may be. And Microsoft Link is, is poised to really revolutionize the way we communicate, the way we do business, and it's more or less one of the big names very fast in the industry as far as you see. And they're going to have some stiff composition, of course, because, um, you know, Polycom's working on a lot of new developments as well. Uh, here's another thing I thought that was great. Tabs conversations. You know, when you're having uh, multiple chat windows open and you accidentally close one or even mistakenly send the wrong IM to somebody, well, th that's kind of a thing of the past with Microsoft Link. They're going to have tabbed conversations where you just open one window and you click the individual and that's it. There's going to be high DPI support. Link now supports high DPI, which is, has the scaling of text graphics from 100 to 150 percent. I know it's really frustrating when you want to send a picture via text or anything of that matter, uh, any mode of communication, and you have to really compromise the, the quality of your photo. That's something that's totally gone and a thing of the past with Microsoft Link. Another thing I really liked was device reporting. I know for a fact I've sent text to people over and over to a certain number of device and now with a lot of the, the presence options you can't tell if somebody's you know utilizing a cell phone or utilizing an IP phone so you don't want to make the mistake of sending them a text and then you know wasting time waiting for a reply. So device reporting is going to show exactly what their status is, what their presence 
options are, what device they're using, whether it's text capable, whether they can receive a call. More often than not, they will be able to receive a call, whether they can engage in video, you know, things of that nature. Uh, there's going to be HD video conferencing. Link's really going to focus on quality with support for 1080p, HD resolution. It's going to have scalable video coding. I, I mention that pretty much every week, but it's nice to mention that uh, for someone besides Polycom, SVC, scalable video coding, basically makes forwards and backwards compatibility, and it makes it so your devices don't you know, go extinct in the process of all this progression. Um, Microsoft Link is also going to have a web application which supports VoIP, IAM, desktop sharing, even more. Uh, Mac OS X users will also be able to participate. Microsoft did pretty much covered all bases. There's going to be mobile apps, uh, enterprise voice features. There's going to be intra-truck routing through Link server. Uh, you could connect an IPPBX or a PSTN gateway and or a PSTN gateway P, uh, PSTN, I'm sorry. Uh, other other prize voice features will also allow for a simultaneous ring, caller ID, just pretty much all the features that you enjoy and love with VoIP. And it's great to see that there's going to be that integration. There's going to be homegrown and proprietary integration. Many users will find that Office 365 makes life much easier. Everything's going to be consolidated into one space. I believe it's going to be $50 per year per user if you subscribe to Link through Office 365, which is well worth the price. Uh, there's going to be a unified contact store, which is great. You can just upload your contacts and they'll be available on Link, on Exchange Server, uh, on Outlook, Outlook's web app. Everything will be right there for you, and it will be interchangeable. It's a really beautiful thing. You guys can check out more what, uh, details for, um, I'm sorry, Microsoft Link on our website. And again, this is really exciting, and I, I can't wait to actually give it a shot. I should download the trial and um, you know, take it for a spin over the break. Next piece of news. Uh, this is from today. Forbes talks about Google remaining free in 2013. Google Voice, despite the magnitude, the, the, the big boom that has been VoIP over the past year, are going to keep their voice service free. Uh, despite the fact VoIP is a $15 billion business, Ibis World Research has brought the stats. Basically, 30 million Americans are now paying customers of a VoIP service. Uh, the VoIP industry is really expected to generate buku bucks. The industry value is projected to increase at an annualized rate of 15.3%. Amidst this fast growth, Google has announced that domestic calls, whether in the U.S. or Canada, will still remain free. Now, personally, I've used Google Voice before. It's actually saved me a ton of money. I really love the service, but I don't really see people building an infrastructure around it. And I think Google are, are really uh, doing a great thing by, by making this service free. More or less, Google, has been, Google Voice has been great for me when I needed calls forwarded, when I could take advantage of Wi-Fi. Uh, that sort of thing. And I have an application, I'm not sure if you guys use Talkatone, but it integrates right with my Google Voice. Google Voice has become a real simple and easy to use uh, interface and, and something that's trusted among many. And it's great to just have an alternate number sometimes, you know. And, and I do utilize texting via my computer a lot through it also, which is, is fun when I'm, you know, sitting at my computer and I don't want to get my phone, or it's just sometimes easier to type something out, or you want to send someone a URL. It really comes in handy. All right, the next piece of news, it's kind of a, a, a weighty one. Uh, I'm not sure if you guys have come across the article yet, but it's a, maybe it's a safe assumption that everyone has read it, but if you haven't, I suggest you go ahead and give it a quick read. Uh, Cisco, I, I entitled the article, uh, Attack of the Phones, because it's something really out of James Bond, like sci-fi-esque, where people can actually hijack a Cisco phone and use it to attack other phones on an infrastructure, turn it into a listening device. I mean, it, it's, pretty, it's pretty insane. Basically, a Cisco phone was compromised and turn into a listening device in front of a packed auditorium in San Francisco. No big deal, right? Uh, actually, using a device called a the thing pooner or, or owner, depending on how much of a nerd you are, uh, I like to say the thing pooner, a scientist at Columbia and QE was able to take control of a 7900 series Cisco IP phone. So QE put on this demonstration where he compromised this hapless Cisco IP phone and he leveraged a default password which is laid into all Cisco phones. Uh, turning the off hook switch and indicators to when the microphone is active uh, into a quote unquote fun antenna. Uh, so I could see how this wouldn't be fun for some people who would have their phones hijacked. Cisco phones are everywhere. They're probably in your office. They're in the White House. They're aboard Air Force One. Okay, this is a real problem and uh, I think Cisco are 
not scrambling yet, but they're definitely working hard to, to fix it, and I really think they should. Cisco aren't the only ones to blame, and I really feel like they're the big scapegoat here because they're one of the bigger companies. But there is a lot of embedded devices that have this Achilles heel. So, you know, it's not surprising that these phones have a barge mode. In fact, a lot of companies love to have that functionality. They like to have the option. Uh, even if they've forgotten some default password, that's more of a default configuration issue than a code issue. It's once they're able to upgrade its code that things really get interesting and it can spread the exploit to others. I mean, that's the problem with most of these vulnerabilities. A small insight, forgot default password is magnified tenfold, or I should say even a thousandfold. So more or less, they need to change the security models. And security models for embedded devices are in essence rubbish. They are absolute crap, and at some point there should really be a hardening standard for them to adhere to and make both you know, it practical and even difficult to hack through a network. So, I think that'll just about cover it, and um, yeah, I really appreciate you guys joining in. That's all the pieces of news that I have for today. I thought I could keep on going. I'm sorry I got a little riled up there, but I want to say Happy New Year to everybody. Really thank you for everything over the past year. It's been over, a little bit over half a year for me at GetVoip.com, and I've really had a blast, and I really enjoy all the great feedback from everybody, and I look forward to more of that in 2013. So thanks again for tuning in. We really appreciate the support and we appreciate you guys, you know, viewing and, and reading and, you know, all of that, all of the like. So my name is Mike. This has been GetVoip.com's weekly recap number 10, and this will close out the year of 2012. Take care.